Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineers Training Program. And today we'll be talking about two services from AWS that is Athena and Redshift. So now we are entering into database uh, services. These both are database services, but both are used for different purpose and the internal engine and internal mechanism of Athena and Redshift is completely different. So we'll start the class with the agenda. So agenda is overview of Athena, overview of crawlers, overview of glue data catalog. Then we'll set up Athena and we'll execute some sample SQL queries in Athena. After that, we'll be starting with overview of Redshift, create Redshift cluster and execute SQL queries in Redshift. So these things we will be doing practically so that you can get more uh, clarity on this. Starting with overview of Athena. So Athena is an interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data directly in Amazon S3. Let me make it simplified version of the first line. Usually when we create a database, we have to create a table and then we load the data into the table and then only we can execute the queries. But in Athena, you don't actually have to create the table. You don't actually have to upload the data into the table. Suppose you have some data located in S3 that can be uh, tab separated values like TSV or that can be CSV, right? Or that can be any other type of data. So Athena gives you the flexibility that you can directly execute a query on those files that means for the end user it looks like you are executing a query on the table but there is no actual table behind the scene the query will be running against those files stored in s3 so this is very uh, very good service because from a user point of view you don't have to do much from your side and you can you can still do the interactive query service with your s3 files it is serverless, zero infrastructure and zero administration. Serverless in the sense, you don't have to set up a server to execute your queries. As in when you will execute a query on S3, behind the scene it will be launching ser some, some server temporarily. Just like lambda function. If my lambda function was running for suppose 10 seconds, then for I will be charged only for those 10 seconds and I don't have to worry about starting a server or stopping a server or what should be the capacity of that server. That's not our concern. Same thing is here. In Athena also, it is serverless. You don't have to manage any infrastructure and you don't have to manage any administration. Administration in, this, in the sense like uh, suppose a newer version of software is available or some security patches you have to apply. Those things you don't have to worry about. That will be completely taken care by AWS. Easy to query, just use standard SQL. So Athena does not have any separate query syntax. So the basic SQL syntax, if you are aware about, select star from table, order by, group by, where close, joining two tables if you are aware about those concepts you can easily work on athena as well and pay only for the queries you run only the processing time you will use you have to pay only for that scales automatically executing queries in parallel in case you are running a lot of queries on lot of s3 files Behind the scene, AWS will automatically scale your Athena service. And you can use Athena to process logs, perform data analytics, and run interactive queries. Mainly the read-only data. In usually in database, you have the flexibility to update the data or to delete few rows from the table. But that is not the case here. Because you are directly dealing with S3 files, and there is no way to modify S3 files and to delete selected rows from S3 files. That's why 
you can query them that means you have the log files available you want to do some data analytics you can do that but you cannot modify the data you cannot delete the data so nowadays it's all about analytics you have large amount of historical data and your purpose is to analyze the data not like uh, editing or deleting something only analysis so that can be done very easily with the help of Athena. So any doubt on this first slide, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll be starting these things practically. So let me log in into my console. In the so meantime, if you have any doubt, yeah, yes. please go ahead. So analysis, do you mean that uh, like only executing the uh, select queries or uh, like, you know, no, no, you can execute any query, but you cannot update. Suppose in RDBMS, if I talk about MySQL or Oracle, you have the flexibility that you can even delete some rows from the table that you cannot do in Athena. But apart from that, deleting and editing, apart from these two, you can do anything. Select query, order by, group by, joining multiple tables, sub queries, and using the, you can say, inbuilt functions, you want to do some count min max everything you can do and per execution like it, it will charge right it will charge yes yes because we are not launching any separate server for athena so it will be chargeable only as per your uses okay okay sir. okay so let me log in into my console i will show you live Okay, so let's search for uh, Athena. You can see this tagline, serverless interactive analytical service. So we'll be opening this. Okay, so this is uh, Athena query editor. You can see on the right side, there is a query editor. But the point is, there is no table as of now. You can see that. There is no table. Right, so first of all, we have to create the tables. And those tables are nothing but pointing to your S3 files. So we have a sample, a sample file, which we will be uploading into S3. And then we will be creating a table on top of that. And then we will be executing the query. So we will come back to this page later on once we have the tables ready. As of now, I will duplicate this tab and will go for another service, the related service actually. The related service name is Blue. So you can see here under data catalog and the databases there is a table section and there is no table as of now but that is fine we will be creating our own table so there's a concept of crawler you can click on that as the name indicates it will crawl so you will specify that under this bucket under this folder my data is located it will crawl through that and after crawling it will find out that okay I can create a table for you as per the data you have given and it will automatically create the table for us but we need to create a crawler first and before that I need to upload some data so let me duplicate this space 
and will open S3 service. So I will click on my S3 bucket 007 and data files we did that that day right so i will delete that because that is containing pdf files okay so let me go back and i will delete this folder we'll create a new one delete okay that's done now i will create a folder with any name i can give input data okay. and now inside input data let's upload some file the file should be in csv format so i have the file handy with me i will upload that file into uh, s3 so not s3 google drive so that you can also download that file and you can use for your uh, practicals so okay it's here sample employee data sample department data right let's let's upload this one sample employee data and we will click on upload okay that's done so i have a bucket inside that i have a folder and inside folder i have a csv file now we are good to create a crawler that will crawl through this uh, directory, this folder and it will create a table for us. So I am going back to here, create crawler, any, any name you can give, my first crawler to scan S3 files and create tables i am just giving a description otherwise it's optional you can skip that i uh, will click on next <coughs> now is your data already mapped to glue tables no not yet so we have to add a data source data source is s3 and Network connection is not required. You can skip that. Now, where is your S3 data? In your current, in your personal account or in a different account? So, as of now, it's in my own account. So, you have to provide S3 path or you can click on browse. Browse. This one is my bucket. This one. This is my folder, right? So, we will provide this one. Click on choose. What is that? This is a required field. Okay. That error has disappeared now. And after that, you, there are a few more settings. Crawl all subfolders. Because right now we have a folder and we have given this folder to the crawler. Later on, you may add a few more folders there, subfolders there. So it will crawl through all subfolders as well. Okay. 